Good morning, I'm Mikey Oreta, and you're watching Basis Points, where we dive deep into the numbers and the stories that drive our economy and shape our world. We begin with a stunning revelation from Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg. He says that the Biden administration pressured his social media company to remove COVID-19 content during the pandemic. In a letter to the U.S. House Judiciary Committee, Zuckerberg says that senior administration and White House officials repeatedly told Meta in 2021 to censor certain posts, including humor and satire. Zuckerberg adds that the officials expressed a lot of frustration when Meta didn't agree and that he regrets not speaking up about this issue earlier. Meta owns and operates social media giants Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp. In the same letter to lawmakers, Zuckerberg also vows not to make any contributions to support electoral infrastructure for this year's presidential elections. This to avoid playing a role in the November vote. Zuckerberg, a well-established billionaire, contributed 400 million US dollars during the 2020 election. Still in the United States, American consumers are feeling much more confident and optimistic about their economy. The U.S. Consumer Confidence Index rose to a six-month high in August at 103.3. That's an increase of more than a percent from the 101.9 figure in July. Still, consumers were less upbeat about the labor market. The share of those who viewed jobs as plentiful slipped to 32.8 percent from 33.4 percent in July. Meanwhile, the world's largest wealth manager is not too optimistic about the U.S. economy. UBS Global Wealth Management raised the odds of a recession to 25 percent from 20 percent. The firm cited weakness stemming from softer jobs growth and high unemployment rates in July as the reasons for that upward adjustment. Earlier this month, J.P. Morgan also raised the probability of a recession by the year end from 25 percent to 35 percent. Meantime, Goldman Sachs lowered its forecast from 25% to 20%. Here at home, seven former finance secretaries are banking, or rather are backing current DOF Chief Ralph Recto's move to use excess funds of state firms to support government spending. They include Cesar Verata, Robert De Ocampo, Jose Pardo, Alberto Romulo, Jose Isidro Camacho, Margarito Tevez, and Cesar Purisima. In an open letter, the former finance chiefs say they fully understand and support the DOF's move to use the idle funds from the corporations owned and controlled by the government. They argue that it's in the best interest of the public to efficiently use a portion of these funds as the alternative would be to impose additional taxes or to increase public debt. The statement was issued amid opposition to the transfer of the 89.9 billion in excess funds of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth to the government's coffers and ahead of the Supreme Court's decision on the matter. On another front, seems like the government is having some difficulty securing a board seat on the country's power transmission monopoly. The Maharlika Investment Corporation's chief executive officer, Joel Consing, says that the state grid corporation of China is unlikely to give up any of its four board seats on the NGCP's board. Now, Consing insists that the government is ready to make an offer, even as the Chinese firm may not be ready to sell. The state grid is a key shareholder in NGCP, which is controlled by Philippine billionaires Henry C. Jr. and Robert Coyuto. Finance Secretary Ralph Recto wants the NGCP to be the first investment of the country's Maharlika Investment Fund, but at a rate lower than the estimated 12 billion peso price tag. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas presents commemorative coins to President Bongbong Marcos to celebrate its 75th anniversary. BSP Governor Eli Romolona handed out the 7,500 piso gold and 750 piso silver coins to Marcos on Tuesday in Malacanang. One side of the coins features the Intendencia building in Intramuros, Manila, which served as the first headquarters of the central bank. On the reverse side, the coins show markings of the year 1949, the anniversary logo, and the BSP seal. The central bank says that the coins will be sold via the BSP store. However, there is no word yet on when they will actually be available. We're taking a quick break. Please stay with us as we dive into the numbers and the narratives that matter most to your bottom line.
Welcome back to Basis Points. U.S. stocks ended flat ahead of a much-anticipated quarterly report from artificial intelligence heavyweight NVIDIA. The Dow was completely flat. The S&P 500 and the tech-heavy Nasdaq gained two-tenths of a percent. NVIDIA's shares were up 1.3 percent, bringing this year's gains to about 159 percent. With NVIDIA viewed as the biggest winner so far in AI technology, investors are looking towards its second quarter results to gauge the health of the industry at large. Trading at the Philippine Stock Exchange opened just a few minutes ago. Let's take a look at the initial figures over there. Right now, uh, for the most part, I'm seeing a sea of green. The PSE index is up by two-tenths of a percent to 69.88. All shares index up by about as much as well, up by two-tenths of a percent to 37. 70 um, financials, industrial, holding firms, services, mining oil counters are in the green. The uptrend is led specifically by the services sector, which is up the most, up by eight tenths of a percent. Now, bucking that uh, uptrend is the property counter, down but not by much, just down by uh, four tenths of a percent. Now, today, we are shining a light on a well-respected and well-loved entrepreneur. With us now is Hanky Lee, a co-founder of the Yellow Cab Pizza chain and the founder and president of the Henry Hotels and Resorts Group. But I know he likes to be called the innkeeper. Good morning, Hanky, and welcome to the show. Good morning, Mikey, and thank you for having me here. Okay, so Hanky, um, you know, you are a serial entrepreneur. You've done a lot of great things. Going back to kind of what you've come to be known for, Yellow Cab, okay? You're one of the three co-founders of Yellow Cab. Yes. I understand you and your barcada, you yes. had a Chow King barcada, you guys yes. were franchisees. Yes. All of a sudden, you said, hey, let's put up our own thing. Yes. Can you tell us that story? How did Yellow Cab, the pizza we all love, come to be? Yeah, so we, you know, we were barcada, we were three of, three of us. Uh, their names are Albert and Eric. No, and and basically during conventions and franchise, you know, fr these franchise conventions, we would gravitate towards each other because we we liked each other and we kind of we were different. But because of our differences, you know, those were the things that brought us together, right? That and then complemented what, each other. Okay, we what were those each other. differences? What was your core and the two other guys? What were their cores? So you know, what, one 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 of them, uh, Eric, he's, he was really uh, in in our group. He was the visionary. He was the one who basically told us, why don't we do something different, right? Outside of this Chow King uh, franchises that we all had, right? And then Albert was, he was our, I call him our resident genius. He was not good with numbers. He was also good in marketing, right? He was the one who coined the name. And for me, I was the one who's, you know, like, you know, I'm affable and, you know, I like people. So, so I, I took on HR for, for uh, Yellow Cab. So okay. that, that those were our, 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 you know, our differences, and then we just hit it off, and then we just one of these. It was in 1999 where we took a leap of faith, and then said, "Hmm, you know, let's let's really do something now." And boy, did that work out! And why, yes. why pizza, Hanky? Out of all the things people eat, you know, food is a primary need. There's so many things that people can go for yeah, yeah. to um, to fill their stomachs. Why pizza? Well, we wanted to do something that was easy, right? So. Because remember, we were in Chowking, right? So imagine cook, cooking Pancit Canton is, is, is very hard, right? Um, and imagine doing that across, you know, like a hundred or something stores at that time. It was very hard. So what we thought, hmm, you know, pizza would be something that was simple, right? Because it's basically bread mm -hmm. with toppings, right? Easy and then, to assemble. Easy, were, yes. Were any of the three of you chefs? No, we were all businessmen. So we're all entrepreneurs, actually. So. But we're not chefs. So what we did was we got a, a technical consultant who's so good at, actually her specialty was pizza. Wow. And we met her attending a, uh, a cooking class. Okay. And then we said, hmm, you know, this is the chef that we want to work with. Right? And then, again, the rest is history. The rest is history. And looking at that history, you know, everybody sees the success that you guys brought forth and the, uh, the sale to the Pancake House group, right? But nobody knows the challenges that you went through before that came to be. Yes, yes, yes. Can you walk us through how difficult that was initially? Yes. So it was very difficult. Imagine, you know, all, you know my people think that, you know, when they look at Yellow Cab now, you know, it's an overnight success. But... It's not an overnight success. So you're right. You know, there, you know, our journey has been fraught or riddled with with challenges. And one of them is really at the start is wow. You know, we didn't have that much money to set up 
right? So I remember setting up, we bought an, a used oven and we put it in our garage in New Manila, right? And that's where we tested uh, our pizzas. So imagine that, you know, like we bootstrapped a lot yes. of things, right? Even the construction of our store was bootstrapped. We used scrap materials to, to build our very first store in Makati Avenue, right? Yeah. And then there, there came the challenges of growth, right? Finding good people, right? Finding more equipment, finding locations, right? So it's, wow, I mean, I, I, look, at, I look at that fondly, but it was a lot of, it was a lot of challenges. Yeah, blood, sweat, yeah. and tears, blood, sweat, and tears. Yes. A lot of good businesses were born out of garages, um, you know. Mm -hmm. So going back to 2011, you were at 82 stores nationwide when you were acquired by the Pancake House Group. Was the goal always to build and sell? No, no, the, the goal was really to grow our, you know, when, when, when we started with one store, we said, okay, that's enough. No, and then we said three. Okay, okay, let's go to three, let's go to five, right? So we really didn't have a plan. We just grew and grew, and then we also grew internationally. But when you know, the right opportunity came to, to sell the brand, which is actually for, usually for Philippine entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they build to grow or mm -hmm. pass it on mm -hmm. to the next generation, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, when that opportunity came, wow. And for, for Pancake House uh, at that time, because they were building together a, a group of restaurants, for us, hmm, this would be an opportunity to cash out, an opportunity to hand over the brand to someone who could grow, grow it, it even, even further. further. Okay. Mm. Did you, I know you can't disclose the amount, um, but did you ever think to go public rather than to sell to the Pancake House We also House thought group? of going public, but going public at that time was a, a tedious process. It was like a, I think a th on a three or four year process to uh, to list, right? So, mm -hmm. but the opportunity again, us entrepreneurs, right there, right there right. We, you know, when the offer came, it's like, wow, you know, you know, uh, it, my entrepreneur journey has been a lot of leap of leaps of faith, I call it, right? Mm -hmm. So, going into Yellow Cab was a leap of faith, and then selling the brand was also a leap of faith, right? Yeah, well, so. the, we, the consumers, are happy you took that leap of faith because, uh, you know, it's a favorite. It's become a Filipino favorite, that brand. Yes. Um, was it difficult to part with your pizza baby? What went into this decision? I mean, that opportunity to sell to the Pancake House group was there suddenly. Was it difficult to make that decision? <laughs> well, we, we liken our, our businesses to our children, right? But, but actually... To be really honest, you know, there was very little regret, right? Because, you know, you grow something um, and then you're able to g gain value from that. And, and the reason why probably I didn't regret, if that's the word that we will use, regret that much, is because I went into a different business right away, which is yeah. hotels and resorts, right? So I did, basically, I kind of didn't have time anymore to think about it. Okay. Mm. And... Going to the Henry Hotel Group, another baby of yours, you started that from the ground up as well. Yes. Um, what inspired you to enter this completely new industry? Well, aside from a leap of faith, another no, it's leap really, of faith, of aside course. from the leap of faith, it's, it's really me being an entrepreneur who spots, who's able to spot opportunity. Okay. Right? So, one of the things, aside from HR, like I mentioned, one of the things I did for uh, Yellow Cab was to go around the Philippines and look for locations. And as you go around the Philippines, as I went around the Philippines, I, I can see how beautiful the country is, how great our people are at hospitality, yet we lack hotels all over the country. And I said, hmm, that, you know, another light bulb moment for me. And said, hmm, I want to do this. Let's go right. into hospitality. Okay. Um, how do you choose, how do you spot those opportunities? How do you choose which location is going to be a good one? What goes into, I mean, and, and in a nutshell, what can we learn from you about spotting opportunities in general? Well, actually, I, I trust a lot of my gut, right? So in terms of, let's say, choosing locations, because I was, I, I was used to choosing locations for Yellow Cab, right? For, for the Henry, what happened was we just have a list, right? We know in terms of the tourist destinations in the, in the Philippines, we have that list, right? We, we kind of know who, what, where they are, Boracay, you know, mm -hmm. we have um, mm -hmm. Pang, Pang Lao in mm -hmm. Bohol, mm -hmm. right? We know of Cebu, we know of mm -hmm. Mactan, right? So those are 
basically where we're looking, right? And then if an opportunity or location um, is able to present itself, then we, we dive all in. Dive all yeah. in. Okay, yes. now going back to initial challenges, what were the challenges when you established the Henry Hotel Group? Ah, well, there we didn't start in the garage, right? So here it's like I start. I, I went into a business not knowing anything, right? So one of the one of the things that I did was basically had an HR manager, hired an HR manager who was in the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. and they were the ones who helped me mm -hmm. form together a team. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, um, there's a distinct difference to your brand. Okay, can you talk to us about how you make it so that the Henry Hotel Group is set apart from the other boutique hotels in the country? Uh, so, well, we, Mikey, we consider ourselves actually right now the, the largest boutique hotel brand in the Philippines because our Shargao property opened actually a few weeks ago. So basically we're found in Luzon, Visayas, and in Mindanao. Wow. So okay. that's a unique, uh, you know, our footprint is in the whole of the country, basically Luz Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. But what we are a 100% Filipino brand, right? And what sets us apart is basically what I say, these are our three Ps. One is sense of place. So each of our locations highlight that character and soul of that particular location. Nice. Right. So be nice. it, if it's in Shargao. Of course, it, the vibe is beachy and it, surfing. Exactly. And, and which we cannot use that vibe, we, we cannot transfer to Manila. Of course. Right? Or in Bacolod because they're, it's very different. So we highlight that, that sense of place of each property. And the second is, like what I said, you know, the Filipinos, we are predisposed to service. We are predisposed to hospitality. So that's why we use Filipinos, right? And then the third is what I say, we celebrate the Philippines. We work with social and local enterprises. So we, that's the, an ecosystem that we put together mm -hmm. and, and basically you can find that in a lot of the touch points of the country, of the, of the brand. Okay, that's another thing. How have you grown through collaborations? Yes. So, uh, one, of the, one of the philosophies for me that's very important is I, I say it's standing on the shoulders of giants, right? So, I know that in hospitality, it, think about it, it's 24-7, right? It never sleeps, right? So, so and then it's, it's a complicated business. So there are, you know, you have restaurants, you have... So basically what we do is we stand on the shoulders of giants. Like we know our core, which is the rooms, right? But there are other things that we have giants as a partner. So our restaurants are partners. So our restaurants are partners. Our, like example, our transport services are also partners. A lot of things are basically, uh, what I say, outsourced, mm -hmm. but outsourced to those who do that well. That's a lot of collaborations. It I is mean, a lot, a of, lot collaboration. of people are fantastic entrepreneurs, but a lot also have difficulty working with other people, you know, in that network. There's just so many touch points. Yes. How do you how do you make it so that you choose to, how do you choose the best people to work with? How do you spot the talent and how do you retain the talent and, and uh, the, all the people skills? Talk to, us, uh, talk to us about the people skills necessary to run a top-notch hospitality uh, firm. I'll speak about, uh, no, I'll speak about uh, I just came from Dumaguete yesterday, right? And I'll, I'll speak about, his name is Don Ramos. So okay. Don Ramos is the provider of our vehicles in, uh, in uh, Dumaguete. And I met him during the pandemic when I visited uh, uh, the resort, right? And, and he, I, I didn't know that he, the owner himself, the entrepreneur himself, was the one driving the, the van for us, right? And you can see in the van, there's this dignity or this, I, I call it dangal, right? He kept the van very, very clean and it was a new van and you could see his love for what he did, right? And I automatically told him right after when I found out that he was the owner, I said, let's work together. So until now, we, we, he uses, uh, we use him as our transport and he has grown his, his van business. So it's now about 15 vans. Wow, all right. All right, interesting. So, that's, that's another challenge, finding the right people to collaborate with, yes. right? Okay, before we go, some light stuff. Okay, because you founded, you co-founded Yellow Cab, I've got to ask you, mm. what is your favorite kind of pizza? 
oh. from the toppings to the crust, what is your ideal pizza? And then we'll do one more question about the Henry Hotel okay, after sure. this pizza question. Sure. Actually, one of the, one of the best pizzas I love from Yellow Cab is called, we, we have an acronym for it, it's called RGS. So it's called Roasted Garlic and Shrimp. Unfortunately, now I think, I don't think Yellow Cab still serves it anymore, but that was my favorite because it was not your usual pizza that we know of, right? Mm -hmm. Tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. This one was white wine sauce, mm -hmm. and then it had fresh shrimps as toppings and roasted garlic. And wow, every time I, that's what I eat. I know that pizza, that was our favorite too. Okay, mm. now must have amenities for a hotel. Must have amenities for a hotel. Yeah. Good amenities, so good shampoo and good okay. body wash, right? So, so that's one. Mm -hmm. And then the most important, is a bed, a, a bed where you can sleep soundly at night, right? Because in the end, a hotel, you know, we can have all the bells and whistles, mm -hmm. but in the end, a hotel is where you, sleep. Yeah. yes, it's where you lay down, it's where you rest, yeah. right? So you can get yeah. recharged for yeah. the next day. And sheets too. So what's a thread count you recommend, <laughs> Hanky? <laughs> so the, okay, so the one we use is actually 300 thread count because, you know, for those who have traveled abroad, usually it's higher thread count, but because it's cold, right? So you need a higher thread count mm -hmm. to keep you warm. Mm -hmm. But here in the Philippines, where it's a tropical country, we make do with 300 thread count. Okay, some valuable lessons there from Hanky Lee, the co-founder of the Yellow Cab Pizza Chain and the founder and president of the Henry Hotel and Resort Group. Thank you, Hanky, for being with us this morning. It was Thank a you. delight to have you. Thank you, Mikey. Now, in other news, Wall Street is finally coming to the richest sports league in the United States. Owners of the National Football League, or the NFL, amended changes to the league's ownership policies to allow private equity firms to acquire up to 10% of the teams. The deal sets the stage for club owners to cash in as franchise values soar into the billions of dollars. The, the NFL is the last big U.S. sports organization to open its doors to institutional investors. And before we go, Malacan Yang suspends classes in public schools and work in government offices in Metro Manila due to the continuous rains caused by the southwest monsoon. Several local government units in the region also suspended classes in private schools. These include Quezon City, Manila, and Marikina City. They are also, there are also rather no classes today in Kawit and in Noveleta Cavite. In-person learning for preschool to senior high school in Taitai Rizal is also likewise suspended due to the rains. And that's it for Basis Points. I'm Mikey Orada. Stay tuned tomorrow for more news on the financial markets and more. Keep it here on BNC, the Billionario News Channel, always on top.